Pyram comes with a suite of administrative options that basically allow you to control what data can be entered and accessed through um, data acquisition. It can be accessed through tools in the administrator options. Um, your system administrator will be able to tell you what PIN is, provided you have access. And as you can see, we have a number of interface and subscription-based options. Um, we can lock the positions, which will not let us move our panels around. Um, we can lock the configuration of panels, which will mean whatever equipment or statuses or locations are set up within a panel will be locked in place, so they cannot be changed. Um, these sorts of things are really useful if you're trying to standardize the control room format and have the exact same layout for multiple operators, which is what some sites like to do. Other sites go by personal choice, but ultimately it's it's operation specific. Um, we have the lock the enter measures dialog, which basically locks the configuration on this enter measures screen. So if you have particular measures that you want to appear here and nothing else, then you would use uh, that tick box to enable that. We also have the canvas scroll bars, which basically will remove the scroll bar so that only what is currently being viewed on the canvas will be accessible. Again, this is all just tools to lock down and control how data acquisition can be used from the perspective of the system administrator or the PRM administrator in most cases. Um, the most interesting aspect of the administrator options is probably dashboard mode. Um, Basically, this locks down everything, every form of data capture within data acquisition and lets you effectively repurpose the program to be more of data display than data acquisition. Um, so you can see here I've got a, a maintenance view set up with the, the statuses of my uh, underground and surface equipment as well as a catalog of all of my non-critical faults. Um, we've also got the maintenance status in terms of where those pieces of equipment are in the in the maintenance process, whether they're waiting for parts or fitters or under repair, or whether the repair has in fact been finished. Now we're waiting on the operator to get back in his vehicle. Um, this is an example of a heads-up display, but there's really no limitations in terms of what you can set up for visibility of the data around site. And because it is data acquisition, it is effectively visibility of, of live data. We also have access to subscriptions. Um, so speeding alarms is, is going to be based on, on GPS. It's going to allow you to set a threshold for a maximum speed. And then if the operator is to exceed that speed, um, an alarm will pop up within the alarms section of data acquisition, which will be uh, wherever you've set it to be. But um, you've got alarms here. We can see most of my alarms on this configuration are stockpile level alarms, which is the next option. Uh, we also have task deviation, which is where our shift plan task has, has deviated from the plan. So for example, um, we've got a, a jumbo who started drilling in the wrong location. Uh, and as a result, he hasn't started progressing on his task as expected that we flag to the control room and then they can potentially use that information to go in and, and redirect the jumbo or the operator onto the correct task that they, that they should be working on. Um, we have operator qualifications, which can be set up and basically um, allow you to set uh, what pieces of equipment or what role an operator is qualified to perform. So someone jumps in and logs into a development drill, um, but they only have the qualification to be a, a truck driver that will create an alert for the control room and it'll potentially, depending on the settings, will we'll lock them out of that piece of equipment within their mobile display, provided that they're using one. Um, we also have our stockpile levels, which is set up in reference data using minimum and maximum level. And basically it just creates a flag where our, um, our control will be alerted that the, the amount of material in a given location has moved below or above um, the allocated threshold. So I've set this uh, minimum level on pit 2 to be zero tons and we should have just moved below that now so we should see a an alarm violation pop up here we go um, basically this is just a flag that you know you need to consider moving more dirt into this into this stockpile or conduct a survey effectively just warning that you've moved beyond the threshold that you've defined for that location we're going to ignore it in this case and go back into administrative options 
to close out the remainder of the subscriptions. So stockpile level alarms, um, GPS events are based on integrations with tagging systems that we have. And again, we have the display task deviation alarms, which is a, a heads up display for whenever that task deviation that we discussed earlier actually kicks in.